Now, International Day of the Midwife is celebrated annually on the 5th of May, providing opportunities to honor the work of midwives and promote um, awareness of the crucial care that midwives provide to mothers and their newborns. This year marks the establishment 100 years uh, ago of the International Confederation of Midwives. There are currently 143 midwives associations representing 124 countries worldwide, including the Confederation of African Midwife Association, which was inaugurated in 2013. Um, so midwives who have been an inaugural part of African medicine for centuries are the frontline caregivers and backbone of maternal and he child health care on the continent. They support women through pregnancy and childbirth, providing antenatal, interpartum, intrapartum and postnatal care, um, family planning services, as well as breast and cervical cancer screening. In emergencies, they can also perform basic emergency obstetric um, care. So we can help but say thank you to all the midwives in the world. Without them, I will not be here. <laughs> Without them, <laughs> we all will not be here. Do you have any any uh, close um, person to you that's a midwife? No, but this um, this day we are commemorating again today just reminded me that I have done one year on ways. Oh wow! Um, we are, of course more than one year on ways. You know, because I, I can remember this conversation. We celebrated the same day mm. last year. A year ago. And yeah, that's just what came to mind. I'm like, oh, Midwife's Day again. Again, yeah. oh, we're mm -hmm. here again. <laughs> yeah. So, but kudos to them. Kudos They're to doing them. an amazing job. Absolutely. That's yeah. one profession that I hope that our governments can find a way to restructure themselves and begin to really appreciate them, people mm -hmm. in the medical field in general. In general, so, absolutely. Yeah. All right, so let me start with you, Norma Efenge. All right. What did he find for us in the news? Well, we have uh, situations going on, but we will. Okay, I seem to be having trouble okay, all so of a sudden. Let Elsie start then. <laughs> <laughs> let me go first. Um, what I found is um, a story on Premium Times. Um, the headline reads: Police arrest hit and run Lebanese driver. It was important for me to take this because I know how the media would always blow out of proportion whatever a Nigerian does mm -hmm. outside Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We are the unruly ones. <laughs> and we are the ones that don't follow the rules and are always breaking the law, you know. But yeah, this is for a change, I guess. Um, the police in Lagos have arrested a Lebanese national um, by name John Gregg who drove into a pedestrian and sped off in Victoria Island. Hmm. The command spokesperson, Benjamin Hundei, stated via his Twitter handle on Thursday that um, the victim, identified as Omotola Akinsonia, is currently in the hospital. The incident, which happened on Wednesday, was first reported by a Twitter user, um, and that was where it was picked up. So on the 4th of May, um, 2022, at about 7.45, a middle-aged Lebanese man um, drove a Toyota foreigner recklessly and against traffic on San Lucifer from our road, thereby hitting the lady, which resulted in serious injuries mm. to her leg. Mm. Um, so I'm glad that he's been arrested, and of course he would um, face, face the, the music. Group. Yeah. Mm. It reminded me of, I think it was a story that you read sometime, you know, what's in the news, where somebody also drove against traffic and killed someone mm -hmm. and uh, finally was apprehended. The boss, no, I'm not I think sure. they were still looking for the boss, the Sienna boss. Even though we're, you know, relieved that it's not a Nigerian. But I think some of these things have become um, possible because of the, the irresponsibility. Mm -hmm generally about nigerians as in nigeria that you can get away with a lot of things so yeah <laughs> so oh, come here and come and pick up bad habits oh yeah i was going to say oh, that really? even so he, yes, yeah, bad habits, yeah. yeah. No, yes. Serious. <laughs> most likely because yes, he cannot try it outside he country. cannot even try it in his own country you know this thing you just said um rmd's um, daughter tweeted mm. i think um i saw a, a blog that posted something she had mentioned that after they had, I think, launched a particular project, she was dropped out of that project because mm. she's Nigerian. Mm. Mm. So it is, it, I mean, it's not, even, it's not even within the shores of Nigeria anymore. Yeah. Everything that all of these things, you know, um, accumulate into affects us globally anywhere in the world. So, mm. it, so just by being Nigerian, 
you have to be extra 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 to give make sure you're doing because even whether you are abroad or anywhere you know that that um that brand nigeria still hunts you down right and it's always about so the what negatives. we just did nice that we found a way to still blame ourselves no oh, well I'm, i mean i'm not saying to... what you're saying is wrong but I feel like sometimes we also need to begin to cut, cut ourselves, ourselves some slack, slack. I because get you. I was having a conversation with Marian, plus politics, and her experience in Uganda, she just came back and all that, and my own experience as well. And it seems like we are the ones who never appreciate ourselves. We are the ones who would always say something negative about ourselves, and other people don't necessarily see us. I mean, we know that Nigerians can be extra, but I just feel like we should... We should cut ourselves. So what's that English you spoke now? Some slack. <laughs> All right. Maybe we need try calm down. We are not the worst in the world. Ah, okay. Oh, I agree. All right. So my story has to do with politics. Well, it's the season, and mm -hmm. it says support group picks up nomination form for Osibaju. Oh wow! Um, they picked it up. Mm. Did you see the guy that was crying that they picked up the form for? I don't know what state that is now, but please go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Vice President Yemi Shibanjo has picked his expression of interest and nomination forms to contest the 2023 presidential elections on the platform of the APC. His spokesman, Laolu Akande, made this known today, and uh, he said that the forms were collected by representatives of Osin Bajo's support groups. That was what caught my attention, actually. So he said that this passionate team of support groups and individual Nigerians from across the country have raised the funds to support and purchase the APC nomination forms for the vice president's bid. And uh, this story, of course, we know that the forms cost as much as a hundred million. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering because towards the, I mean, further into the story, it gave uh, an elaborate. Uh, record of most of the governors who have picked up their forms as well and i'm wondering in my mind wow is it does it it seems like 100 million is just like 100 naira around, uh, around the <laughs> corner or something money. it said in apc at least 15 southerners are already in the race mm -hmm. We have Governor Dave Omahi of Eboy State. We have Governor Ben Ayade of Cross River. Former Governor Rocha Sokoracha. Ex-Governor Adams Oshomole. APC stalwart. Oh, sorry, Adams Oshomole oh, you didn't Yes, know. he's running. <laughs> Bolatin, uh, uh, APC stalwart. Bolatinubu. Vice President Yemi Osimbajo. Governor Kayade. Fayemi is there. The Minister of Niger Delta Affairs. Amosu. Godswell Ababio Apab is there. The Minister of State for education, Emeka Waju, Wajiba, and the former se uh, Senate President Ken Namani has also joined the race. That's over. I, I can't even do the math right them now. Today, but yes, not today, governor. yes, he has also picked, picked up, up his, his form. form today, at his presidential form. And there's so many of these contesting. And I'm wondering, wow. I need to probably change my circle of friends if I have a group of people who can... Yeah, that, means that, <laughs> that are, But really, mm. it's, it's just interesting to know how quite a number... That, I think somebody made a comment that the, the, the bar was raised because they wanted to reduce the number of the to quality... Filter. Oh, yeah. yeah, to filter the quality of aspirants that come in. And then we have more people who have come... Up you know, now, I saw a, a, I saw a funny more than picture. before. I saw a funny picture today of one senator. I won't mention his name. He was in tears. He said that these people... About now, that they bought, they yes, bought. yeah. <laughs> that was the one he was, she was talking about. <laughs> so it's just, it's really interesting times that we're in. And I'm really looking looking I mean, forward to the days, outcomes. Days leading to the election is always interesting. Hmm. Um, but there's Primaries. something I saw, though I haven't read the article completely, but it's a quote from Femi Falano where he was saying that it's in premium times he's saying that the illegality of um outrageous nominees fee mm -hmm. right and he's saying something about the apc ought to have realized that by restricting politics to the affairs of fat cats it has violated article 13 and um, one of the african charter on human and people's rights um which says that every citizen shall have the right to participate freely in the government of this country either directly or through freely chosen representative in accordance to the provision of the law. Hmm. So last time speaking English.
Mm. All right, so I also took this story because it's, you know, sometimes when we hear things like this, we think it's unique to Nigeria. Mm. That's why I took the story as well, you know, in line with what um, Elsie had taken. 13-year-old girl who was gang raped mm. by four men, allegedly raped again by the cop when she went to file complaint at a police station in India. So, mm. yes, this incident happened. It mm. came to light during the counseling by an NGO after the, uh, which the case was lodged in... Um, La Lipto, what had I pronounced this place, on, on Tuesday. So according to the complainant, um, the mother of the girl, her daughter, was abducted on the 22nd by some guys, I can't pronounce their name, Chakan, Rajban, you know, all those Indian names, who took her to a particular place where she was repeatedly raped mm. by all four accused men for four days. Oh, wow. They raped her for four days. And this girl was brought back on the 26th and dumped in front of Pali police station by the accused. She was later handed over to her aunt. A day later, the police called the girl to the police station to record her statement. In the evening of that day, the, girl, um, the girl's aunt took her to the police station. Um, the police station house officer, um, they mentioned his name, where he raped her. He raped her mm. and the complaint... Um, had um, that's that's where she now also alleged that he also raped her, you know. So you know when we see things like this, we think, oh, this thing is is unique. When we hear, oh, Nigeria, Nigeria, you know. When I heard this, I said, okay, you see that this culture, this rape culture, is it's a global thing. It's a global, global thing. yeah. Of course, it's always been a global thing. But um, I'm saying that you know when you hear, you think, oh, maybe it's jazz, is this, is mm. that. It's just you have a lot we of have sick troubled people. people all over. This is the not world. trouble, no ma. This is sick people. Trouble, trouble, is, trouble sick, makes, uh, it, makes it makes mild. it okay. Well, it, there are well. very sick men out there, and you know, honestly, when Both you identify sick those men kind of and men, women, they should just they should just find a way trouble to just people. eliminate them from the system. It's hmm. as simple as that. It's not that simple. Young lady That's double has. jeopardy. Somebody is supposed to protect you. The person is caught, is part of the people raping you after being raped for four days by four different men. I can't even begin to imagine what. Her and this girl is only thirteen. It, it's 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 traumatic completely hmm. we'll take a break on that note we'll um, come back to discuss the asu strike stay with us we'll be right back